In this tutorial, you will learn how to set up a material and shader for this plant asset from Megascans. We will set up the material library, create a material X shader, and then learn how to properly apply each texture map that is provided with the asset. To start off, make sure your asset geometry is loaded into Solaris by using SOP import for the FBX. In my case, I already created the USD assets that I can load directly from disk. Now, we will manually set up the material library used for shading the plant. But if you stick until the end of the video, I will show you how to set up a Python tool that automatically creates a plant material from a folder of textures. Okay, drop down a material library node and dive inside. Next, create a USD Material X Builder subnet. In here, we can delete the displacement since it's not really needed. Let's begin by applying some color to our plant. Create a Material X image node and navigate to the texture folder. Select the base color or albedo texture and make sure the signature is set to color as well. Now we just need to connect it to the base color input of the shader and reset. Applying the roughness map is quite straightforward. Duplicate the Material X image node, select the roughness map and plug it into the specular roughness input. Notice the mismatching in and outputs resulting in this dotted line. Set the signature type to flow to fix it. The roughness map is a grayscale single channel texture, so it should be treated as such. Next is the normal map. Duplicate the Material X image node once again, select the normal map and set its signature type to vector 3. We do this because we want the raw vector information of the image and don't want any color transformation applied to it at render time. Use a Material X normal map node to connect everything into the normal input of the shader. Up until here, everything should be normal procedure for most PBR shaders, but our plan still looks a little flat and fake. What's missing actually is translucency, which allows light to travel through the leaves, making them appear more lush and alive. The only problem is that there is no translucency input on the Material X shader. To overcome this, we can set the geometry to be interpreted as thin-walled, since we are dealing with infinitely thin polygons for the leaves. Enabling this switches the subsurface shader into a translucency mode. Now we can create a new Material X image node, set it to the translucency texture and apply it into the subsurface color input. Because we are dealing with color information again, make sure to set the signature to color again. If you now increase the subsurface amount, you will see the effect of translucency giving life to the plant, but the more you increase it, the less diffuse information will be applied, until it's completely overridden by the translucency. Of course, you can try to find a balance between diffuse and translucency, but it will always be a compromise between the two. Even worse is that the branches and twigs will get less diffuse color the more translucency you want. A little trick I like to use to overcome this problem is to apply translucency only to the back faces of the plant, so effectively only the underside. This way the twigs and branches will be ignored because they are closed geometry and the back faces don't really show up. And for the leaves we effectively only want translucency to show up on the underside of the leaf anyways. So. Drop down a material x dot node and type ray colon backface. This node will generate a black and white mask for either front or back facing polygons. To test this, we can plug it into a surface unlit node. Here you can clearly see how the twigs and branches are completely black and only the underside of the leaf is white, resulting in a perfect and also very cheap translucency mask. Plugged into the subsurface input, we now have the final result we're looking for. Diffuse shaded twigs and branches and light shining through the underside of the plant's leaves. Quick little side note, you probably also want to multiply it down by 0.5, for example, so that when the underside of the leaf is facing the light direction directly, you will get no diffuse at all, resulting in this weird grayish look. If viewed from medium or far distance, this asset doesn't really require an opacity map, but some or rather most plant assets actually do. Especially if you have complex cuts or shapes like ferns have, for example, or if the camera is really close. If needed, just place down another Material X image node, set to float and plug the opacity map into the opacity channel of the shader. So, we made our first plant material, but this can get really tedious if you have 20 assets to set up. To automate this process, I created a Python script that scans a folder for textures and sets up all the nodes automatically. 
You can get it for free on my Gumroad page in the video description. To use this tool, create a new shelf, right click, add new tool. Open up the Python file you just downloaded and copy paste the code into the scripts tab. Hit accept and now click on the tool to start it. You will be prompted to select a texture folder, so navigate to the textures of your asset. After hitting accept, the material library node will be created, so you just need to place it after your asset and you're ready to render. This script works for basically any Megascans plant asset and should most likely also work for any plant material that has equivalent PBR textures. In any case, it sets you up with the required nodes quickly from where you can fine tune or adjust your shader, add functionality, etc. I hope that this video helped you to understand how to work with Megascans plant textures for Material X and Karma XPU and that the little Python script will speed up your projects or at least reduce the tedious part of shading your assets. Cheers!